Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where we have our special guest, John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. Hi, John Mariani. Oh, gracious, good morning. Hey, John, as you know, Art and I are both from New York, like yourself, and we got into a discussion the other day based on your article recently mm. about Katz's Deli. We got into a discussion about delis here in, in the Los Angeles, Southern California area. Art actually took me to a great uh, kosher deli called a Taste of Kosher. Kosher, kosher Bite. What is it? The Kosher Bite in the Laguna the Hills. Kosher Bite. Kosher Bite. Yeah. So we're going to discover more uh, good good delis uh, here in, in Orange County and San Diego County. But I wanted you to talk to, to us about Katz's because that's a world famous classic delicatessen. And I. There's so many good delis, but they seem so far apart. Well, I, I, I disheartened to disagree with you that there are so many. Uh, there are still a lot of not so good delis. And in New York, we've lost the Carnegie. We lost the Stage. We lost the Sixth Avenue. We yes. lost some of them that were in the Garment District. Yes, uh, I knew those well. You know, yep. and it's uh, there are still half a dozen first rate ones, Second Avenue Deli, uh, Len Layman's up at the Bronx and, and so forth. But Katz's is unique in every sense of that word, one of a kind. Nothing looks like it. Nothing operates like it. <clears throat> and nothing dates back to 1888, which is when it was a small deli uh, owned by a name, the Iceland Brothers Deli, because it was owned by the Iceland Brothers. Um, on the Lower East Side, which is a predominantly Jewish community, um, no longer is. Now it's a hip and happening spot for art galleries and so forth. And in 1903, Willie Katz joined them. And uh, he says, <clears throat> we got to expand uh, beyond just an immigrant Jew uh, who comes in here for his, his corned beef and, and, and his pastrami. And the, it started to catch on. As they expanded, it became Iceland and Katz, and then they bought the Iceland brothers out in 1910. The Katz took over, and the rest is history. They moved across the street in April 1970, where it is right now on Houston Street, which is H O U S T O N, not Houston, but the way it's pronounced as Houston because it's an old Dutch street. <clears throat> so it kind of sprawls halfway down the block, and it's very famous. Uh, if you walk in there, they probably have about 200 seats. And you walk in, they give you a ticket stub. And you take the stub over to the counterman, who are not unfriendly, but they're not exactly going to be your pal. It's <laughs> New York. Huh? It's, New, it's York. New York. What do you want? You remember the soup Nazi on, uh, on the Seinfeld, but you wouldn't want to mention the word Nazi at Katz's at all. But you go there and you have your little ticket. And you say, I want pastrami on uh, rye. And the guy says, lean a fat. Uh, lean a fat, uh, a fat, sir. You know, and you give your ticket to him. And he clicks it so that how much the amount is on there. And then you move down the line and you get your frankfurters and you get your drinks and so forth. And you end up, and God forbid you lose that ticket. Because they will just charge you that you ate the whole place. They'll charge you, I think, I think it is like a... I don't know, five hundred dollar fine or something. Um, so don't lose that ticket. So you sit down with the old Formica, you look around, and you see all these wonderful um, um, photographs of who ate there: Woody Allen and Billy Crystal and so forth. And you see their famous sign when their two of their sons went into the uh, service in World War II: "Send a salami to your boy in the army," which is really sweet. Um, you got a T-shirt saying that too. Um, and probably look around, half the people in there are not even New Yorkers, not even Americans, but are from all over the world. I mean, this place is very, very famous. So what do they have? It's the typical deli menu. They've got great matzo ball soup. They have blintzes. They have um, the pastrami. They have the corned beef. They have the um, brisket all on rye. Some people do ask for white bread. Now, it's not kosher. So you could get butter, and they do have cheese and um, blintzes and so forth. Uh, so they have all that. They have great pickles. They have terrific frankfurters. And um, the french fries are very, very good. And then they um, sell still Dr. Ray's Cell Ray Soda and Manhattan Coffee Special. 
Um, so you sit down and of course everybody thinks of the famous scene in um, in when Harry met Sally. We're all going to do the line together. Okay, so Harry and Sally uh, are sitting there on like their first date in Katz's and Billy Crystal's very, very Jewish and Meg Ryan is very, very wasp. And uh, they're eating and they start talking about men having sex. And she says, well, you know, women fake it all, fake orgasms all the time. He says, no, no, no. Says, I wouldn't know, says Billy Crystal. He says, no, you won't. He says, yeah, I would know. And she goes into this orgasm at the table. And it's hilarious. And the woman is sitting across from them. Yeah, Dukakis. Waiter comes over and the woman says, what? I'll have what she's having. <laughs> classic, right. classic scene. So everybody apparently but you two know that line. Yes. Uh, in any case, uh, that's Katza. So you finally exit to the cash register, an old-fashioned cash register, and uh, it's all cash um, still. And uh, I think it's all cash. I'm not sure they take credit cards, but uh, they didn't use to certainly. And you will take half of what else, else whatever you ordered home because although those sandwiches cost upwards of 28 29 30 dollars they are stuffed enough for two people at one sitting and i guarantee you'll be having it for lunch tomorrow so it ends up being quite quite a buy and you know they make it the old-fashioned way they know they they it's the amount of time that it, it takes to cure and to cook and to steam and cats is the only deli left in the united states which are indigenous to the United States, certainly not to Eastern Europe or Israel. The only one that's still the countermen cut by hand, no machines, like they cut it by hand. So for all those reasons, Katz's is unique. And anybody who's coming to New York is at oh, I have six meals in New York. Where should I go? Number one on my list would be, you got to go to Katz's. Hmm. Now, it's kind of yeah. interesting that... Um... Uh, I've been out here in California for about 40 years, uh, grew up, we had uh, really good delis almost on, in every small town and, and, and part of New York City and out onto Long Island. And one of the key things about it, because the deli meats were not invented here, uh, they're mostly uh, European and uh, uh, the kind of flavor and the way they were prepared. But the water in New York is of, of a quality that's unique because it's basically filtered through granite. And the big problem that they've had in California when I first got here was how to duplicate the taste of the meat, which is steamed. There's a steamer where they keep them uh, hot and uh, moist. And uh, rye bread has the same thing. And out here, the, the waters are basically uh, filled with all sorts of uh, uh, minerals and things that don't exist in New York. So everything tasted Hard different. Water. Yep. So until they until they figured out how to recreate the environment for making the breads and the the meats and things like that, New York was pretty unique and and still is in most cases uh, because you just can't duplicate all of the 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 things that go into uh, uh, adding to the flavors or not adding to the flavors. But uh, New York delis are sort of unique. Uh, did you, uh, I, uh, were you a fan of round or square potato conditions? I'm a round potato condition guy. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I don't favor one or the other, frankly. But what okay. I want to ask too is that uh, you know when all of the Jews in early Hollywood went out there, the thing, of course, they missed most were uh, was a delicatessen. Right. And uh, later on, now I think Cantor's is still around, and that's a pretty good one, right? Uh, it's, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, but, but John, was, tell about your experience of a really well, great deli that that we went to the other day. Yeah. Oh, we had a great play. We had just had a wonderful time. But um, I, I had a there was a great deli in Columbus, Ohio, mm -hmm. uh, in Germantown, German Village mm -hmm. in Columbus. I for the life of me, it's been forty years, so I can't remember the name of it. But it was excellent. It was an excellent deli. But Art, you are absolutely correct about the water, because Ohio has hard water too mm -hmm. and it was totally different than anything in new york as good as that deli was it just wasn't the new york deli the best deli i recall this is going back maybe 20 years in los angeles i think it's our jaime's yes that was wonderful 
Yes, <laughs> long gone. I mean, yeah, there there are a few out yeah. here. So in I think in uh, uh, near Anaheim is a Catella Deli, uh, which is really good. Uh, but they're few and far behind. But by, by the way, I want to give you a, 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 an update. This morning, uh, I normally post uh, uh, articles that we've done and videos that we've done on. We have a Facebook channel and YouTube, and I was posting it on the Facebook channel, and all of a sudden, an ad popped up out of the blue I've never seen before. Katz's Deli will deliver anywhere in the United States, like uh, Omaha Steaks. <laughs> and I can't imagine, because I know that you know, they can't make the sandwich and send the sandwich because they'll get soggy by the time uh, and ruin the bread. Uh, but uh, I saw an ad for it. I was astounded that uh, they're providing uh, uh, deli meats and, and I guess whatever else they have on the menu that they can ship, uh, probably with dry ice or something. Yeah, I mean, even the meats themselves, they're going to be good. And they, they pack them and they will tell you exactly how to bring them really? back to life. Yeah. But, I mean, it's like having prime rib at a restaurant versus shipping it to you the next day. It just, yeah. It's never going to be the same thing. Yeah. Right. John, there have been around the country, I'm sure, great delis here and there. But nobody's ever been able to franchise a deli. I, I remember one... Um, one deli was a franchise, and it was just a sandwich shop. It wasn't a deli. Is that because of the uniqueness of the meats? What? Why can't you franchise one of these delis? I think it, I think it largely is the treatment. It's like bagels. Um, bagels have to be made the old-fashioned way to be true bagels. Now there are a lot of good bagels out there. Oh, I like those bagels. Lenders was the one who started with frozen bagels, and they're all okay. But it's not what great bagel or the great uh, pastrami mm -hmm. is going to be. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah. Uh, Miami has lost almost all. They used to have wonderful uh, deli on Miami Beach. I think they're all gone. And of course, the term delicatessen <clears throat> now just means a grocery store with certain sandwiches. Um, delicatessen was specifically and only Jewish. It was a it was a, a, a tautology. What, Jewish deli? No, delis are all Jewish at one time. Right. Uh, kind of like orthodontist, you know, uh, but um, that no longer is true. You get Italian deli and Greek delis and so forth, but that's just a nomenclature. Yeah, there's a German deli down by me in Carlsbad, and uh, it's it's just wonderful, called the Tip Top Deli, if you're ever in Carlsbad, California. Remember but my favorite, my favorite in L.A. was Greenblatt's. It was right next to the Comedy Store, just across the street from the Director's Guild on Sunset Boulevard. And it it was a great deli. It really was. Do you remember in New Rochelle, Carl Amers? Yes, Carl Amers. I do. German. But he was that was a meat store. It was a deli, was it? No, it was a it was a meat store. But you you got sandwiches there too. But it was one. They had about three or four of them around Westchester. I think there was only one one left out on Long Island. But that was really excellent uh, German uh, Bauernverse and yep uh, all the all the verse the verse they could the worst they could dish out they did yeah okay delis i'm hungry guys time for break i gotta go get some corned beef for more on celebrating act two visit our webpage. follow us on facebook subscribe to us on youtube and tell your friends celebrating act two is the user manual for the second half of your life